Hi, welcome to Therapy Designs. My name is Kelly, and if you're new to this channel, this is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if you're new to print-on-demand or new to t-shirt designing, go ahead and stick around for some useful videos with helpful tips and tricks. So in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to make this design right here. It says embrace neurodiversity and it has a cutout of a puzzle piece and a rainbow infinity design along with a rainbow circle backdrop that we made all using Canva. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you that this puzzle piece is actually a cutout, which means that whatever shirt color you put it on, it will show through. So I'm just gonna take this and you can see as I move it around now, you can see the jeans going through it or the white background going through it. So it is a cutout. Um, benefits of this are when you put it on different color t-shirts, it's not just gonna look like a black puzzle piece, but it will be whatever color the t-shirt is. So this is in honor of Autism Awareness or Autism Acceptance Month that is starting next month in April. So stick around. So. As always, we're starting with our blank background. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels because that is the standard t-shirt design size for Merch by Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a black background. So I'm gonna click on the template here. We're gonna go up to the corner and I'm going to select black. Okay, so for this design, I'm going to start off with several different size circles to create a rainbow background effect. So this is really easy. If you just push C on your keyboard, a circle will pop up. So we are gonna just start by picking a color. And for this rainbow, I am going to start with red and then move orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. So I'm gonna select a red color that I like, something nice and bright. I know that's actually probably pretty good. I'll go ahead and keep that right there. So my first circle is gonna be pretty big. I want it to take up most of the page and I'm gonna go ahead and center it. This is gonna make it really easy to make sure that every circle is evenly spaced on the next. So there is my base circle. So now I'm gonna hit C again and it's gonna create another circle. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this process with the colors that I like. So I can start with my red and then just slide this color wheel down here until I get to an orangey color that I like. So maybe something like that. You know I can play with it. So let's say I go with that orange. Now I am going to size this up and center it. There you go. And then I repeat the process. So I hit C again. This time I'm going to go with a yellow color. So I'll start with the orange that I had and I will just slide this over until I get to the yellow color that I like. Something like that. Perfect, hit C again, another circle will pop up. I can size this one down a little bit. Of course, I can play with all of these sizes once I'm done too. And so I'm gonna go ahead, hit yellow. This time I'm sliding down more towards the green. I'm gonna pick a green color that I like. Um, maybe something a little more bluish green. There we go, I like that one. Hit circle again. I'm just gonna do this two more times. So the next circle, this one is gonna be a bluish color and then we're gonna go with a purplish color. I'll start with my green and I'm gonna slide this down until I get to a bluish tone that I like. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one and then one more time, circle. Center it, I'm gonna make that one a little bit bigger. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make this one a purple tone. So I can, there we go. Okay, so now we have kind of a rainbow circle background. Now if I want to, I can click on the corner drag down and I can group all of these. Once they're grouped, I can move this entire circle around however I want. I can also resize it however I want. So if you don't find it right where you want it, don't worry, you can bring them all together just like that. Click out, now they're ungrouped. 
So I'm gonna start here. So now for this design, I'm gonna go ahead and put a puzzle piece in the middle. I'm gonna be making an autism design um, because April is autism month. So I'm gonna come up to elements and I'm just gonna type in puzzle piece. Oops. Puzzle piece. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and go to graphics and I want just a simple puzzle piece. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one and I want to keep it black because I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can cut this out. So we're going to keep it black. I'm going to go ahead and put it at a little bit of an angle. Oops. Undo that. Okay. A little bit of an angle. I'm going to drag it out so it's a little bit bigger. Perfect, center it, maybe a little bit bigger still. All right, perfect. So now I've got a puzzle piece cut out. Now on top of the puzzle piece, I'm gonna go ahead and do a rainbow infinity sign. So rainbow infinity is the symbol used for neurodiversity. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and do rainbow infinity which I have done before. And you'll see there's a lot of different rainbow infinity graphics. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a simple one. I'm gonna pick this one right here. And again, I'm going to, I'm gonna kind of angle it and I'm gonna shrink it down so that it looks like it fits right inside the puzzle piece, but not to take up a good amount of that space. Something like that. Perfect, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do some text. So for this design here, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit T, that's gonna pull up a text box. I'm gonna go ahead and do my text in this nice blue color here so it's easy to see. And, whoop, move this text box up out of the way, there we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put embrace at the top, I'm gonna make this all capitals, embrace, perfect. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pick a font that I like. I want something big and bold and something a little bit rounded since this all has a kind of rounded design. So you can come up to your text and if you want, you can just search for rounded text and it will pull up all the different types of rounded texts that you can look through. Um, there is one particular one that I know I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna scroll down until I find it but you can play with whichever text you like. And I am looking for is it this one. Yes, there we go, embrace. And I'm gonna make this nice and big. Perfect. Center it there. And then I'm gonna pull up one more text box and we're gonna bring this one down, but I'm gonna go ahead and write neurodiversity in this one. Okay. So you may notice that when you're dealing with two words that are different lengths, um, the, the shorter word is gonna end up looking a lot bigger than the smaller word, which may not look the way you want it to on your circle. Now there's two things you can do about that. You can either take this uh, shorter word and increase the space between the letters. So if I was to increase the space so that now it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit closer to the same length as this one. Or you can change the font so that you have a narrower font at the bottom and a wider font at the top. And so those are two different ways that you can kind of try to even out the spacing. You could also take this font here and try to move the letters even closer together, but these are pretty compact. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and change this font here. And for this one, I know what I want. I'm just gonna go ahead and type it in on the top, but I'm going to do doses, regular, semi-bold, extra bold. Let's go with that. So it narrowed it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it in, make it bigger. I'm gonna bring it up. Now I'm gonna be curving both of these. So I'll just start with the bottom one. I'm gonna curve it. And I'm gonna curve it the opposite direction so it looks like it's going around the circle that way. And that actually looks pretty 
good. Then I'm gonna take Embrace, and we're gonna do the same thing, Effects. I'm gonna curve it this way. Move it kind of down, centered, a little bit closer here. Okay, so there we go. Embrace Neurodiversity, if I relatively close. If I want to bring this down a little bit, I can just use the arrow keys to literally bring it down one pixel at a time until I get it right where I want it. But for the purpose of this demonstration, this is good. So now it's a nice back, it's a nice design, but what you may notice is that if you go to put it on different color shirts, for example, on a black shirt, it looks really good, but let's say I want to make a white shirt. So I'm going to change the background color here to white. And what you'll notice here is that this, um, puzzle piece in the middle is black and that might not look very good. You might want it to look more of a cutout design or with a cutout design, it's going to be the same color as whatever shirt you put it on. So if I have a white shirt, uh, this uh, would be a white puzzle piece and so on and so forth. So one more example, if I wanted to put it on a light teal shirt again, the puzzle piece doesn't look so good. So I want to cut this puzzle piece out. So how I'm going to do that. I'm gonna make sure that the puzzle piece is the same color as the background. So that's the first thing you gotta do. Whatever color background you use, you want the puzzle piece to match. And then what we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and save this right here. Now, normally we would put transparent background, but for this one, you're not gonna click anything. We're gonna save it just how it is with the background and all. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the whole thing right here. Perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up into my uploads. So if I bring it up into uploads, it's gonna pop up. And on here, I'm gonna go ahead and just put add page. So I'm just gonna bring one more page. So now I'm working on the second page here. I'm gonna make this page white, for example, so that you can see. So that's gonna be a white page. And then I'm gonna bring this right over. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and just use background remover and it's gonna remove everything that's black, including the puzzle piece. So if I come up here to edit image and I go ahead and use background remover, it should remove the entire background. Now it might not be perfect. We might still have a little bit of black that we have to erase manually and that's fine, but let's see what it gives us. Okay. So not perfect, but it erased some of it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come up to this eraser tool, click this, and then you can just go ahead and manually erase, you know, pretty much any and all of the black. And so it might take you a little bit of time depending on how well it did on the background remo removal, but that's essentially how you're gonna do it, okay? So I'll fast forward here. <laughs> and there you go. Okay, so now we have erased the puzzle piece so that it will be the same color as whatever backdrop you put it on. So I can go ahead and click out of this. And so here was our original design. And then we scroll down to the next page and here is our new one. And you can see the puzzle piece has now been cut out. And because we saved this all as one image, I can resize it to whatever size I like. Um, little tip. If you make this the same size as this backdrop, it will become the backdrop. What I mean by that is if I pull this out so that it is now the same size as the overall page and I click on it, this has now become the backdrop for this page, which means I cannot change the backdrop color without covering the entire thing. So there you go. If I click a background color, it has now changed the entire background. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back, okay? So if you accidentally do that, the way that you can now change it, because now I can't move it, it's just the background, is I would have to right click and come down to detach from background. And when that does that, it'll make it small again. Now a way to get around this is just to crop in your edges. And so if I crop in my edges just like this, now when I bring this out to both sides, it won't quite fill the entire thing because now it's a slightly different dimension. So I can come ahead and bring it up as high as I want. Perfect. But it is no longer attached to the background because I still have the background right there. So I can still click here 
and I can change whatever color I want. So if I wanted it on black, that's how it would look. We showed you on white, if you did it on a light to gray shirt, you know, not that all of these are gonna look good with this design, but as you can see, as I change the colors, the puzzle piece changes. And so essentially that is how you would create a cutout design. So for this one, you'd probably just want white or black. It's about what would look good, but depending on what kind of design you make, you can use it on all different colors of shirts. So now that I have this design that I like, I can go ahead and save it how we normally would with the transparent background. So let me go ahead and title this first, and I'm just gonna entitle it Embrace Neurodiversity. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here to download. I want the transparent background. Now, because we've done two different pages, so we had this page and this page, it's the second page that I wanna save. So I can select the pages and I can just click page two. So now I am just saving page two with a transparent background. I can click download and there you go. There is your design now with a cutout. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.